And Frank joins us now. Frank, we're sorry to bother you, but you know what? We were talking about it, and we love the we love that scene. So thanks it's, for joining us. It's uh, it's great to it's great to talk to you. It's no bother at all. It's good. Yeah, I get they you know I, they let me off the ward for a few minutes and really. So that's always nice. Yeah, I get to you know I get to you know get a little oh. get a little um, free time. Oh, good. Here okay. At the home. How long did it take for you to shoot that scene? You know, with Samuel L. Jackson and uh, and, and John Travolta. Well, it took. I would say, uh, as I recall, three, four days of shooting. Um, Tarantino is very, very uh, uh, methodical, and, and, um, and so we took, took a lot of time with it, a lot of time with it. And, but you uh, hear that speech by Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah. How many times did he give that speech? Oh, at least, I would say at least a dozen times. Oh, my gosh. To, uh, complete, complete, you know, beginning to end, and it was always, it was always uh, really uh, dynamic and 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 uh, and different each take. You know, he's, you know, he, it was, it was, it was quite compelling to watch. But you know, that. you're going to die. How do you act like you know you're going to die, or you think that you that this doesn't end well? It's a difficult thing to do as an actor because begging and pleading for your life is not a pleasant thing to do. And, um, and uh, it takes a lot of energy and um, a lot of humility. So, uh, uh, you know, you just have to try to keep the energy up and cut, cut, kind of try to keep it consistently realistic, you know. Um, and I just, for me, I just went back to my childhood. But you've, you know? you've worked with, I mean, a pretty good list of uh, actors here. Uh, Kevin Spacey, Kevin Costner, Tom Cruise, Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, and I know there's other actors in there, but... What's the one story that stands out with all of those actors? Uh, gosh, I, um, I I am really lucky. I, well, you know, I worked with uh, Jack Nicholson twice and Burt Lancaster, and I would say uh, my uh, Marlon Brando. I got to work with Marlon Brando, and my favorite. Oh, I, the I, freshman, I, I, yeah. And the freshman, yeah, and, I, and that's probably my favorite. My favorite moment was uh, on the set of the freshman, and and Marlon Brando. And um, there's a great scene in the dorm room. Yes, yes, we were. It was that film, it was that scene we were filming that day? Um, and he comes in, and everybody's everybody's immediately taken in the film. Everybody's taken um, with his resemblance to the, to his to, to the guy in The Godfather, to the Don Don Corleone and the, the Godfather. Yeah. Um, and 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 uh, so he comes in, but the story is that the, the still photographer on the set. Um, was a friend of mine, and and um, he was forbidden um, to um, Brando forbid any photos being taken, any personal photos. Uh, 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 all photos had to be approved ahead of time by Brando. Oh. And um, but I really, I just want like everybody else, I just wanted one photo of me with Marlon Brando. And uh, so I, I thought I was being slick, and and I and I <laughs> and I got next to Brando, and and I had worked it out with with my friend ahead of time, and. Uh, to get this shot, and and I stood sort of stood next to Brando, and uh, and and he was talking to the director, and I and I and, and I motioned to the guy to take the picture, and he took the picture. Did you get and, yelled uh, at? It, well, well, I didn't see him for a while, and it turns out that Brando did catch it, or Brando's assistant did catch it, and he got fired. <laughs> oh, the, guy got, no. the, guy, the guy was the guy was fired, and his, he became a drunk and uh, jumped in front of a train somewhere somewhere in the nineties, and I'm responsible for the whole thing. Wait, 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 wait. The story is somewhat embellished, but I... I okay, uh, okay, so did he get he was fired? fired? I'm not okay. sure about the other stuff, but I... I <laughs> Come on, Frank. He, he might have been a drunk to begin with. <laughs> and maybe he fell in front of the train. I'm not sure, but the fact is, I had this man <laughs> fired, and I haven't spoken to him since, but I do have the photo. I made so, sure I got the photo. Okay, could you text... If, if I give you Paulie's phone number, um, could you text the uh, photo to us? Can I Absolutely. Look? Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Okay, when we hang... Don't hang up when, when we say goodbye. Um, Absolutely. Uh, but you were, I mean, you're with all these big name people, though. Um, the sneaky role in Field of Dreams. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I, I would still wonder, though, how crazy Quentin Tarantino is. Like, is he crazy as a director or just, you know, creative? Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. He's, he's uh, you know, I'm not sure if crazy is the word. He's just, he's very energetic. He never stops talking or moving or, you know, and. The thing about that scene is that he wanted, as I recall, he wanted the the violence to be very, very realistic, and 
So he wanted the guns. There's a certain way that the firearms are, are you know, uh, from a stand, from a stuntman's point of view, to be to be pointed and to be directed, and it wasn't it wasn't good enough. He wanted it to really look like those guns were being pointed directly at people. And um, and I, uh, the thing that I remember is is that they, they the way they do gunshots in movies they call they call them squibs, and there's they're little they're little. Um, uh, electrical charges with blood packs in them, or you know, fake blood packs in them, and he, he, I, the, the guys were instructed to put about 50 on my body, and it's like being punched in the chest, really, depending on the size of the charge. And these these are big charges. So when was, they when they detonate, it, it hurts. It feels like you're getting hit. yeah. Yeah, and we did about 40 takes of that, you know, from various angles. And I, I looked like I had been, you know, uh, with, you know, Boom Boom Mancini. But did you have a real gun pointed at you at any any part of that scene? Well, they're, they're prop guns, but, yeah, they were always pointed at me. And I was uncomfortable, you know, having that that close to me, but you can't really argue with the guy. You know, that's how he wanted it, and and so they were pretty – They were it was pretty close. So it was pretty, you know, to answer your earlier question about how to – Act like you're going to, you know. At, at times in that scene, it was, it, it was, it was a little bit scary because you're not used to having that, 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 that close, and especially when they're firing, they're firing blanks, but they're they're relatively close. You there's can feel lot, it. Well, there's a lot of bloodshed in that movie. We're talking to Frank Whaley, uh, the actor who's been in Pulp Fiction and JFK and Hoffa, The Freshman. Uh, Ray Donovan. You're also uh, Field of Dreams. What movie did you know was going to be? Classic, iconic, great. Uh, did you think Pulp Fiction was going to be this big? Yes, I, I did. I predicted the whole thing. What about <laughs> what about Field of Dreams? Did you know that I wasn't sure about because you know I was I, I you know it was hard to say because it was you know it was uh, you know kind of a fairy tale and and um, I mean and I was young and I didn't really know what I was you know I didn't know really know much about it. I was just happy to be there. How old were you? Uh, 22, but I was playing like, you know, 14 or 15, I don't know, 16. I was playing younger than I was. I was actually 43. But weren't but, you 22 but, in Pulp Fiction? Um, I'm, I've been 22 for a long time, <laughs> and and I plan to keep it that way. Um, I'm not sure how old. I think Pulp Fiction was what 94. Yeah. Uh, and I was born in 63. You can do the math. Okay. Yeah. So you're 21. I was, I was actually I was actually in my 30s. I think. 31. Yeah, it was thirty-one. And um, but and and oh. when was when was filled the dreams made? How, how about my math? I just I talk to my biographer. Frank, Frank I it. just screwed up your math. I had you twenty-one, and yeah, yeah. So that, I twenty-one, went, twenty-one. I was in juvie. hadn't hadn't you know I hadn't gotten hadn't gotten gotten started yet. But um, yeah, no, I I I was uh, I was young, and I didn't know you know field of dreams. I wasn't quite as sure uh, as I was about Pulp Fiction, but I was it was it was a blast. You know, I spent the summer in, in, on a baseball field in Iowa. You know, just just running around and driving around on golf carts and 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 playing baseball. You know, it was it was it was a blast. What about the Doors movie? Who did you play? Robbie Krieger in the Doors? I did. I played Robbie Krieger. Okay, so you got Oliver Stone. I've done four films with Oliver Stone. Now yeah. he's he's crazy, right? Who's 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 more nuts, Oliver Stone or Quentin Tarantino? They're 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 exactly even in terms of craziness, <laughs> but it's just different kinds of crazy. Oliver Stone is the kind of crazy that you're afraid he's going to show up at your door with a machete and tell you to take off your pants and get in the back seat. And Quentin, I would say, is just you're you're just afraid he's going to put something in your lunch. Did Oliver Stone ever have you take off your pants and get in the back of the car? Once with the machete. And it was okay. late. We were, it was the Fourth of July. We were both exhausted. I understand that. How hot was Meg Ryan when you did the Doors? She was extremely attractive. Did you and, think you had a shot? I had, I, I, I had, I've known from a very early age I have no shot. <laughs> so there was never any question about me having a shot with Meg Ryan. Okay, no. but who was better looking, Val Kilmer as Jim Morrison or Meg Ryan in The Doors? Val Kilmer wore leather pants in The Doors for, for three straight months, and so, he, so I would give him the top prize. Yeah, that's the right. I, he strikes me as a guy that stayed in character even when he wasn't on, on screen. He did. He wanted everybody to call him Jim. <laughs> I, I, but I just referred to him behind his back as a dick, <laughs> and I think he knew that. No, Val was a great, Val was a great guy, and he, but he was—he's a method actor. He was—that was he—he he was, you know, he was—he was Jim Morrison. <laughs> he was Jim Morrison. All right, uh, don't hang up. Paul. We'll put you on hold, and, and um, we'd love you have you in studio one of these days, Frank. Thanks. For I'd being, love to come by. Be a good sport. Uh,
We'll, uh, we'll get that picture of you and uh, Brando that got somebody fired and eventually drunk and thrown in front of a train. That sounds good. Thank you, Frank. That's uh, Frank Whaley. His uh, Twitter handle, the Frank Whaley, W-H-A-L-E-Y. He's good. Pride of Syracuse, New York.